This old 351 Windsor production block has seen its time. Assembled June 2020, 5,000 driven miles, pump gas E85, 200 plus track passes, plus a lot of stick shift no prep, 18 pounds of boost, 840, 1,000 wheel horsepower and torque, which is pretty much 1,000 at the crank. If you're ready to see what the 408 Stroker looks like with the pan off and all the parts off, with the years of abuse, stick around. We're about to open it up. As you see in this video that we just did, we had an issue with the camshaft. Now it's time to tear the motor open, see what it looks like on the bottom end. Okay, so this is the format of the video. We've got some of these small parts to still get off, you know, with the pulleys and the, uh, with the gear and the oil feed, you know, lifters. So what we're gonna do here in this video is take pretty much everything apart because it's gotta go back to the uh, machine shop. We're also gonna take a look at some of the pieces and see maybe, maybe I might've cracked the main, maybe not. We'll get a good look at the bottom end of the motor. For being three and a half years, that's gotta be one of the cleanest blocks I've ever taken apart. I was always very adamant about changing my oil with as much abuse that I had on this motor. Plus I took care of it pretty much, didn't have a whole lot of timing in the tune. So let me get some tools out and we'll start wrenching on this. Just like in my other video, these are the Morel Limited Travel Link Bar Lifters. They look to be in pretty good shape considering the use on this engine. Got a little bit of marks on them, but change my oil quite often in this motor to try to keep it as, as nice as possible. So probably end up reusing some of these. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I'm about to take the camshaft out too. I'm gonna spin it around, grab my camshaft tool. Get new bearings anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. Those lobes look pretty good. I see a lot there. I don't really see anything. Hmm. Interesting. We did end up pulling the camshaft. It is an ISKI cam. So I'm looking in here. Hmm. All right, so where are we at now? I mean, look at the hatch on that. I mean, I drove this a lot on the street when it was more streetable. And I mean, this motor, and this won't take much to clean up, but here's this one. This cylinder looks a little bit glazed, sort of, but you can see a good hatch in a lot of these cylinders here. I'm really, I'm really impressed with it. So yeah, we got the camshaft out. Didn't have a whole lot of wear on it. Uh, it's an old ISKI cam that we had had from a number of years ago. Um, everything looks pretty good inside. We just got it emptied out. We're gonna go ahead and flip this over and take the pan off. Shouldn't take us too long to take this motor apart. I'm just really curious to check out the mains, check out the crankshaft and the bearings after all that abuse that it's had for all those years in the car. So I'm excited to find that out. Like I was saying just a second ago, you know, the cylinder walls look really good, but you know, a couple of them were showing a little bit of wear. So let me get some more uh, tools out and get this uh, oil pan off. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, that oil pan's kind of a pain in the ass to put on and off, but it's definitely a good oil pan. It started leaking on me after a couple years. It's why you see all this right stuff on here. I didn't know where this leak was coming from. Welds would start leaking here and there. It does it on my other pan too. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to actually re-weld this and, and probably be able to reuse it if I actually spend the time to 
fix it. Got a nice girdle on it. It's definitely clean. I'm always pushing for my motors to be zero balance. Better on harmonics in the engine. It keeps the engines together. And these are, you know, big block mains like I had spoke about before. And this motor's definitely been through some, some horsepower for sure. But we're going to get the rest of the way to part tomorrow. Check out all the little details with the mains and such and the block itself and get it over to the machine shop so we can start getting it fresh back up. Okay, guys, we're back in the shop here today. We're going to go ahead and get right into uh, getting the rest of this motor torn apart. So I'm going to put you on the helmet cam, and we are going to start taking off the oil pump, oil pump feed. One thing I did want to point out before we actually get started, this, is, this tab right here is one of the main reasons why the 363 wasn't in my Fox body to stay for all them years. When I had first had the engine in the fo white Fox body, it had the turbo kit that was on it, as you guys seen me do here on the channel recently. That tab, like my oil pressure would go up and down. Like it would show zero or five and it would go up to like 30 or 40 and it would fluctuate quite a bit. And what actually had happened in that old Moroso oil pan that I had, this tab actually rattled and cracked the, the tube itself where my oil pressure was fluctuating and it wasn't going right to the oil pump. So here I had thought I had ruined my motor and what I actually did is oil pump pickup just cracked in half. It wasn't fully broken yet, so I was still getting some oil to the motor, but I definitely starved it a little bit and the bearing showed a little bit. This is where we got into the 408 build at the same time we did the 363 build. You see what I mean? So both engines were kind of built together and they just ended up in individual cars. But I wanted to clear that up. I wanted to show you guys when you're putting this thing together, put a brace on these oil pump pickups. So if you got a symptom with your oil fluctuating quite a bit, and you don't really know why in a good motor, might be a good idea to check to see if there's any cracks around your tab. As you can see here, it looks like Dave modified this and created a bracket and put it right here in our main girdle, which kept this nice and sturdy, if you guys see that. This is another thing you wanna make sure that you have the proper clearance at the bottom of the oil pan. Here's another really interesting thing that I actually found here on the engine build. This is what failed in our engine build there. Look at that dowel pin that was in the camshaft. Look how that thing was literally wearing out. But check this out. Look at that bolt. Look how warped. Looks like the threads were pulled. Looks like it's twisted. You go to put it in. You know, this bolt goes in really easy. You know, 7 16 this is your camera retainer, right? Now, this came out of the top. Now, I go to put this one in, and it literally, look. Like, I could still get it to thread, but it's real hard to get in. Which tells me that that probably one of the, these two things here were probably the culprits to what we had going on in the motor. Hmm. I didn't even see it. And I'll just replace that with a different one now. Maybe this started backing out, which caused this to start moving. Does that make sense? All right, guys, we're pretty much at the point now that we're going to start tearing the rest of the motor apart. One of the main caps on so I can go ahead and start popping some of these pistons out and rod bearings and such. So we'll take those out. Won't take too long. And then we'll take an inspection at our main caps and then we'll go ahead and I'll go over the build towards the end of the video. But again, I always stress zero balance and you can see some of the things that have to happen. You got to add Mallory and change a lot of stuff up to make a zero balance actually work. But this is honestly one of the, the best things I can show here on the channel is zero balance your motor if you have the option to do it. It's gonna make worlds of difference in the harmonics of your engine, especially when you're pushing it on, you know, with horsepower and such and RPM. If you can get it and it's affordable, make it happen. Probably one of the best things you can do to your engine. One and number five piston, we're gonna go ahead and take them all, all out. Okay, here's rod bearing number one. Look at this. Check it out. Wow, look at that. Look how clean that piston is. Look at that. It's insane. I don't see any ring lands, cracked rings. <laughs> look at the skirts. Number five. Wow. 
Wow, look at number five. Same thing. No broken rings. Looks really good. All right, let's tap on it real light. Definitely looks good, number two. Bearing looks good. No rings that are broken. I don't see any lands that are messed up. Here's number six's bearing. Number six bearing look good. Got a little more side, side squirt wear there, but not really. Rings aren't broken, lands look good. Number three right now. So here's number three's bearing. Really good shape. Number three's bottom bearing, top bearing, whatever you want to call it. Rings look good. A little bit tight there. There's number seven's top bearing, or bottom bearing, sorry. Number seven. Looks good, rings look good. Cleanest engine I've ever seen. All right, this is number four's bottom. Here's number four is their top bearing. This one had a little bit of skirt here. It's not terrible. It's like something ran through it. Rings look pretty good, not cracked. Okay, last one, number eight. <clears throat> See what this looks like. Number eight's bottom bearing. Number eight's top bearing. Piston looks good. Don't see any broken rings. A little discoloration there. All right, folks, we're down to our last piece of the puzzle here. We are going to put you on the helmet cam and we're gonna take the crankshaft and the main bearings out, which is already pretty loose to begin with. And we're gonna start checking them. And again, once again, you can see how much weight you gotta take out or add in specific spots for like zero balance. It's not as easy as you think, but um, it's def definitely worth it when you uh, on your counterbalances when you're getting ready to build an engine. But let me put you on the helmet cam. We'll check each uh, main bearing and we'll pull the crankshaft out. Um, pretty much be ready to send this over to the machine shop. Okay, so a majority of these caps are already ready to pop off. So we're gonna go ahead and check these things out. This is number one cap that get, definitely gets a lot of load. Looks really good to be honest with you. Had something go through it. Doesn't really catch my nail or anything on the uh, crankshaft. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Number two. Same thing, a little more wear than the, the number one. Had something definitely go through it right here. Probably some of that turbo that ate, that it ate at the track. I mean, we might we might be able to get away with just polishing this crankshaft. Just so you know, we had our crankshaft at about two and a half thou clearance or whatever. Let's go back here to number five since I've already kind of messed with it a little bit. Or the rear. Wow, that actually looks really good. I'm not really catching anything there. That's a rule of thumb if you catch your thumbnail on something it's got like a gouge in it makes sense why the thing still held almost 60 psi on oil pressure three years later let's check number four should pop right out i'm gonna give it a little bit of tappy there we go wow this looks really good too as much shit as we done and last but not least the, the thrust bearing now this is the bearing that gets most of the abuse. So it's kind of the, the main main bearing, I guess you could call it. So we'll go ahead and pop that off here in a second. Wow. Huh. I am impressed. Got some on here. This crank is tough, man. Probably doesn't even need to be polished. I don't see any nicks. Of course, I don't have my fingernail, but let's just pop the crankshaft out and look, because I want to look at the main webbing anyways. I'm not gonna reuse them anyways, so I'll just stuff it back down in here. We'll set this crankshaft over to the side. Okay, so what I wanted to do is take a peek inside the webbing here on the block because on 302s, they like to split. I actually had a couple like crack on my 302s that are back there, my little wall ornaments. Anyways, I wanted to check the webbing because this block has definitely seen a lot of power through it over the years and I'm not really seeing anything out of the ordinary. I mean, we still have to magnaflux it and check it or whatever, but it looks really good. I'm just impressed all the way around. I mean, this block's still good 
to reboost, in my opinion. When built right, you can't tell me that a 351 Windsor production block can't hold power and hold it for long periods of time. Three and a half years, lots of passes at the track, street miles, E85, which is considered a pretty corrosive fuel to begin with. That motor looks like you could just put that thing back together and run it. But guys, I promised you I'd go through the build real quick. I wanna show you, this is Weissco Pistons. These are K1 Tech rods, 408 stroker build. Actually, it's a 410, this is 40 over, but that's only because the block used to be 30 over before. K1 Tech crankshaft, as you see the part number there. We ran link bar, limited travel morel lifters with an isky cam as you see here and this is just a camshaft that we had on the shelf that uh, me and uh, the mad scientist had on the shelf not exactly the best but it's what we went with uh, the custom cams in the 363 that's a grind by uh, dave himself the the mad scientist but yeah production block 40 over nothing special we did run some uh, good tri-metal bearings literally have like no no wear on them i'm impressed with that as far as balancer is concerned, we, we actually wore our trick flow balancer out. We even wore the camshaft gear stuff out. That's what the major failure was, but much like this harmonic balancer, it was close to this Summit brand, trick flow, whatever. Moroso, seven quart pan, standard volume, oil pump. I can't say enough what this motor has done for us here at the shop. It's been a 357 stock block, stock bottom end build before. It had 30 over Weissco pistons. I got them back in a, back in a box there. Turned into a 410 Windsor block in June of 2020. A lot of street miles, a lot of passes on the dyno, a lot of passes at the track in this white car, if, you've, uh, if you're familiar with it. I'm gonna tell you what, still be in there right now if it wasn't for that failure. But you know what, there was my, I was losing about 10% power and I was wondering where it was coming from. You know, with this cam dowel pin, look how wore out it is on the one side. And this cam retainer bolt was like loose, sort of, and came out real hard in the block didn't come out easy one last thing before we go check out the cam bearings look really good cylinder walls got some scoring here and there for sure but look otherwise looks pretty good flip it over and take a peek you can see some scoring in here but not terrible guys not terrible right block doesn't look split yeah i'm not the first one that's done this stuff i'm not going to be the last person and there's been plenty of people out there that's done the same thing i have so make sure you go check all those guys out and support them too if you're a big fan of the small block ford in a 351 windsor undoubtedly one of the most underrated ford small blocks that was ever made roller or non-roller but if you guys enjoy this sort of content leave me a thumbs up give me a comment below let me know what you guys think check out that join button as the members get exclusive content to the channel thank you guys for watching i'll see you soon in the next video